those monsters, they're, they're gonna get me. What? Th those what? What's the monster, kid? Those things. They keep coming. They scare me. Make it stop. <clears throat> hey, calm down. It's gonna be okay, I promise. You won't leave me like all the other grown-ups. You... You can help me. Uh... I'd like to help, but you need to know more first. Those... Big things. They're all over Great Itch. And they killed everyone. Please, mister. Please find my papa. What happened here? It used to be kinda nice. No one bothered us there. I guess because we were so close to DC. There were seven of us living there in tall, old brick houses. I think I'm the last one left. Those things took everyone else. Who else lived in Great Ditch? Um, besides me and my papa, there was... Doc Lesko, who stayed with us, and Will Brandis, and his mama and papa, too. I... guess they're all gone now. Hmm, did you know the others in town very well? Nah. People don't like to stay long in Great Ditch. The DC ruins aren't a great place to make a home, you know. In fact, Papa was talking about moving on soon. We've been here for maybe a year. Alright, let me ask you something else. Alright. What is it? Uh... Mind if I ask about some of the people who lived here? Nah, go ahead. It's just nice to talk to anyone about stuff at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about this Doc Lesko. He was a strange man. He paid Papa some caps to help him build a shack and carry a bunch of junk into it. Papa called him an egghead, but his head was shaped regular, so I didn't get it. Hmm. Do you have an idea what Doc Lesko is doing in Great Ditch? Nah. He was a nice man, but he never wanted to play with me very much, and we barely talked. All I know is he was all gone when the ants started showing up. I think they got him too. The ants, eh? Uh, did Doc Lesko have any weird stuff in his place? I don't know. All kinds of doohickeys. Boxes with lots of lights, some funny glass bottles. Oh wait, he had a big, clunky, shiny man too. That was kind of neat. Where did this Dr. Lesko stay? He spent all of his time in that shack next door to my house. Every time I'd sneak in there, he'd be sitting at that funny-looking TV machine with the green words pushing buttons. Hmm. How about the other people from Gay Ditch? Yeah? Tell me about the Brandis family. Well, there is Will. He was sorta of my friend. And then there was his dad and his mom. Where did the Brandises live? Right across the street, actually. It was pretty swell having someone to hang out with so close by. Hmm. So, you and Will were good friends? Yeah. Will was super nice to me. He was like a year older than me, I think. He even shared his comic books with me. We explored pretty much every bit of Grey Ditch we could find. I think that's why the ants don't bother me. I have good hiding spots. Hmm. How about, uh, how about Will's parents? Well, his mom was nice too. She was kind of quiet, but she always took care of me and my papa when we came over. I think she was sad that my mom was gone. Will's dad was... Well, I don't want to be mean, but he was kind of scary. Hmm. Will's dad was scary? How so? He was like, always watching me and my dad real careful, like he didn't trust us or something. He always kept staring at us from the windows of his house and typing stuff into his TV box. Will said his dad was like an old soldier or something, but he didn't like doing that stuff, so he quit. Mmm, is that so? Alright, um, about the other people from Grey Ditch. Yeah? Let me ask you something else. Alright, what is it? Um, <clears throat> where is your house? Look for the house nearest to the billboard. That's sticking out of the ground. It's pretty close to the diner. You can't miss it. Uh, can you tell me more about the things attacking Great Ditch? Well, they're big, ugly things that crawl around on six legs. They got huge teeth and skitter around grabbing everything in their path. My papa would always say they're fucking ants. Well, that's what he used to call them anyway. 
I just call them fire ants. Have they always been around? Nah. Those things started coming around only in the last few months. At first, they just crawled around outside our town. But later, they came into town. And, well, you know the rest. Right. Uh, is there any way, any special way to hurt them? My papa had a gun. He said it hurt those things. But he said they were the dumbest fucking ants he ever saw. He kept telling everyone to shoot for their antenna. Whatever that means. Hmm. Let me ask you something else. Alright. What is it? Okay, I'll go look for your father. You will? Really? Thanks yep. a whole lot. My house is the one closest to the huge sign and the old diner. Please, find my papa and make him come back. Look, every, anything else you can do to help might save lives. You know, maybe this will help and maybe it won't. But papa hid a bunch of stuff behind the old diner and a dumpster. He trusted mm -hmm. me with the key and said it was for emergencies. But I bet he wouldn't mind you having it. Mmm. Alright, um... This probably isn't the best place for you to stand. You think I didn't know that? Uh, I've been hiding in this place for days. There's an old porter shelter next to the diner near my house. Those stupid things will never get me in there. I'll head over there and wait inside. Hurry back! Alright. Oh, well hello there! Oh! Careful now! Ca ca careful now! Careful now! Didn't your mommy tell you not to play with fire? Um. I hope you have good news for me. I really do. Hello. Come on, tell me already. Well, it's not exactly good news. I, I think I have some bad news for you. Oh no. What happened? Well, uh, Brian. Um. Hey, you know, my name's my name's Brian too. Uh, Brian, I'm sorry, but you, your father's dead. He's he's dead. I guess I already. Yep. Besides, I'm too tired to cry anymore. That's the spirit. All right. Uh, why did you just forget about it and clear on out of here? Look. My dad used to always say, you can do whatever you want in life, but the family comes first. If I left now, I'd just be running the world. <clears throat> I can't do that. I owe him. Right, right. Um, well, <clears throat> um, I'll stop whatever started this. I promise you. You gotta stop it, so this can't happen to anyone else's family ever again. I wish I had yep. met you a long time ago. And then maybe my dad would still be alive. Thanks for doing all this. I'm feeling better now that you're here. Absolutely, absolutely. I just wish things would go back to how they used to be. Yep. You just, uh... You just close yourself in that shelter here. And I'll be back for you, I promise. Phil, you startled me. Oh. You really mustn't creep up on people like that. All right, fella. What the hell are you doing down here? Well, I might ask you the same thing. You're trampling about in a delicately balanced and highly sensitive experimental area. Experiments? What, what do you mean? My experiments are of a complex nature and would take a scientist to explain. Oh wait! I'm a scientist! How marvelous! My Good for you. My into reducing the girth of these insectoid creatures <sighs> is of utmost importance. I intend to generationally reduce their immense stature by way of a pre-birth induced mutagen. Isn't that clever? Oh, I see. You're trying to make them smaller over time by injecting the eggs. My word! You understand perfectly! How marvelous! So, are you aware your new ants breathe fire? Well, this is rather embarrassing, so you'll have to forgive me, but it appears that I've made a slight miscalculation in my mutagen samples. 
Mm -hmm. Instead of lowering the size of the ants, the brood hatched and developed a, a new biomechanism. I call their genetic aberration pyrosis, the ability to emit flame from their bodies. I may be able to... Right, it's very clever. But I can't get near my equipment. I'm shocked you didn't attempt this in a controlled environment first. Your knowledge of experimental procedures surprises me. Indeed, I have skipped a step and directly modified an entire brood. Perhaps I was too hasty. I was so certain it would work. To correct this mistake, I'll need to get to my terminal to modify the mutagen. Hmm. So what can I do to help? Since you've offered, allow me to elaborate. My portable Go on. terminal is set up in the hatchery chamber near the Ant Queen. If I can reach uh. it, I can continue to work on improving the mutagen. The Ant Queen. If the Queen's your concern, why not deal with it directly? If she were harmed in any way, months of data would be lost. Your objective mm. would be to eliminate what I call her quintet of nest guardians. Filthy little abominations. Right. And this will stop the fire ants. No, it should all wrap up rather nicely. I've rigged my equipment at my portable terminal to emit what I call an inhibitor pulse. Once I send this pulse, all of the remaining ants will lose their empathic link with the queen and frenzy destroying each other in the process. So, that's all there is to it. What do you say? <clears throat> Well, listen, <clears throat> this is a hefty task, Doc. I'm gonna need some serious incentive. Yes, I suppose you're right. Science must learn to acquiesce to your standards in order to advance itself. Right. I was merely going to offer up one of my mutagenic bio enhancers, but I suppose I could up the ante. I Go on. I also award you with my old lab coat. It served uh, me well over the years. Excuse me? you may find it useful for your own experiments. What would I want to do with a f an old dirty lab coat? Alright, whatever you say, Doctor. If it will stop the ants from burning down Grey Ditch, I'm in. You will? How marvelous! Sure, why not? My friend, the nest guardians can be quite tenacious. Alright. What do you know about Brian Wilkes? Far too curious. His incessant questioning would often come when I was the most absorbed with my calculations. Mm -hmm. He had no regard for the importance of my work. Right. Um, don't you realize you've ruined his entire life? You have your ideals and I have mine. I'm down here to complete my experiments at any cost. If that means the loss of a few lives to save generations of lives in the future, it's a small price to pay. You should have at least told him you were alive. He thought he was alone. I can't risk leaving this place. I have to continue monitoring the hatchery for any further mutations in the next brood. I have no time for children in their petty games. What do they know about the importance of my work? Well, can't you at least take responsibility for his father's death? All scientists take responsibility for their failures because it comes with the territory. I will take this experimentation to completion without roosting on the moral high ground. If I allow emotions to enter the mix, all this time and energy spent will have been for nothing. <sighs> Alright, let me ask you something else. Yes. Uh, about your experiments. Oh my, yes. They're quite marvelous. There are many that say it can't be done, but I'll prove them wrong. Something isn't right. You shouldn't have got the results like this so quickly. Well, um, I may have used a few, uh, <clears throat> shortcuts, yes. Mm -hmm. I was told that the FEV works wonders when used under controlled circumstances. Apparently, I Excuse was wrong. Me? But I the FEV? I'm certain I can get it to work. You put FEV into the ants. <sighs> Christ, Doctor. Um, 
So how c exactly can I destroy to to mutagen? Destroy? Oh no no uh, no! What? You do that. It's my life's work. Just clear me a path to my equipment, and I'll do the rest when you tell me it's safe. All right. Let me ask you something else. Yes. I have to go now. Much to do. So much to do. I've detected some changes within the Queen's hatchery with my equipment. What's transpired? Well, um... My work is done, Doctor. Oh, how marvelous. Please, tell me what happened. Come now, the faster you tell me, the faster I can provide promised payment for your services. Well, um... Basically, I've killed all the nest guardians. Then I will proceed to my portable terminal at once and make the necessary changes to the formula. Thanks all right. very much for everything. You've been quite a useful lab assistant. Sure. I, um... So, what will you do now, Doctor? Well, I will continue my research. There has to be a way to reduce these creatures to their former size. Until then, I will be staying in my shack next to the Wilkes' home, should you ever wish to visit me. And so, um... What should I do about Brian Wilkes? You should take him away from this place. Find him a home. It would be mm. difficult to accomplish my experiments with him scampering about and asking an interminable amount of questions. Right. Let me ask you something else. Yes? I am ready for my mutagenic bio-enhancer injection and lab coat, Doctor. How marvelous! Here is the promised lab coat. I am certain you'll find it quite useful. Which injection I am not so want? certain. Will it be the ant sight or ant might? Um, I guess some some ant might might help. How marvelous! Ant might it is. Hold still, please. All right. Oh. I feel like my strengths have been increased by one, and I'm. I feel that I'm. 25% resistant to fire. Thank you, Doctor. No! Uh, shit! Why did I move the fucking bobby pin? Ooh! Naughty nightwear. Fuck's sake. Whoa! I'm only gonna ask you this one time. Uh, Give me the naughty nightwear! I'm keeping it. I don't advise you to back up before I get angry. All right, all right. My mistake. It obviously belongs to you. Now, uh, you just watch it, because I won't be so nice next time. All right, whatever you say, Lognut. Cut it out. Ah! It was so weird. All of a sudden, the ants went nuts and started fighting each other. It was like oh. they were totally crazy. It was really scary, but kind of cool at the same time. You know what I mean? Um, not really, since you were locked in there, so you ha you you wouldn't really know. How could you tell that the ants were fighting? Number one, and number two, I killed all the ants. None of the ants were alive to fight each other. They were all dead anyway. So I don't know what you're talking about, but. I'm glad you're safe. I wish I had something to give you for all the work you did, but I never really had much to start. Oh, don't worry. I've got a lab coat. A dirty old lab coat. I'll try living here by myself. Hope you'll come back and visit someday. Well, hold on a minute. I can't leave you here alone. Let me find you a place to live. Really? You mean it? Sure. Oh boy, thank you so much. I'll wait in my old house for you to come back. I need to bury my papa anyway. Just don't All forget right. about me. Any idea where I can look for someone to take care of you? Well, papa always told me about my cousin Vera. 
She lives in some big giant ship somewhere or something. Papa mm. called the place Rivet City, but I don't know where it is. Right. All right. I uh, I have to go now. I wish I was tough like you. Nice day, huh? What are you doing to? What are you doing to this woman? Get out of here. Welcome to the Weatherly Hotel. I'm your hostess, Vera Weatherly. Hello. <clears throat> have you heard any interesting gossip? Well, I really shouldn't tell you, but have you heard about Polly Cantelli? He's no. addicted to Ken's. His poor wife Cindy is at her wit's end. Right. Are there any other rumors you've heard? They say Mr. Lopez is losing it. He stands on the top of the bridge tower for hours at a time, just staring out over the city. All right. Well, um, Vera, um, your nephew Brian, um, he lost his folks, and he needs a place to live. Poor dear. I know what it's like to be alone. I'd love to take him in. Don't worry. I have the means to keep him fed and healthy, but most importantly, safe. All right. I think Brian will love his new home. I'll send him along shortly. Oh, that's wonderful. If you ever wander back into Rivet City, why don't you check up on us? You're always welcome. Right. I hope you found me a place to live. Yeah, I sure did, Brian. Vera said she'd take you in. You really found her? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I can't believe everything you've done for me. Most people would have kept on walking when I ran up to them screaming like I did. I'll get my well, stuff together and move know. on out there right away. Come mm -hmm. visit me sometime. All right. Hello there, fella. Good to meet you. Name's Smith, Jack Smith. Welcome to Andale, the best little town in Virginia. Um... Virginia? Virginia's been gone for 200 years. Not here. Not in Andale. No, sir. The great commonwealth of Virginia is alive and well. In fact, we just uh, voted ourselves a new governor. Uh, you voted for governor? How does that work? The adults walked right on down to the polling location and dropped ballots into the box. How do you think it works? Uh, yes, sir. It's every American's civic duty to cast his vote for his favorite Republican candidate. Am I right? All right, okay then. Yes, sir. Democracy is God's best gift. Right after family, of course. Right. So, who did you for vote for? No, no. My vote is my business and no one else's. But I'll uh, tell you one thing. We uh, didn't vote for any beatnik liberal commies, that's for sure. No, no. Of course not. Um, well, anyways, it's, it's good to meet you, Jack. And it's good to meet you, too. Feel free to stay in Andale as long as you like. Heck, stop by the house for dinner sometime if you'd like. Just let All Linda right. know beforehand so she can make enough for four. Thanks, Jack. Uh, maybe I'll do that. I hope to see you there. So, did you need anything else? So, tell me about this place, Jack. Andale, greatest place there is. We win town of the year every year. We've got no end of food and no troubles at all. Yep, there's no better place to raise a family. Well, hello. Welcome to Andale, winner of the best town in the USA contest. Uh, best town in the USA? How many towns compete in that contest? Well, I don't right know. But we're the best one. Isn't that what matters? I mean, uh, we're the winners. Us. But Not Springfield. Not Rockville. Us. So like I was saying, welcome to Andale. What can the Smith family do for you? All right, uh, Linda, tell me about Andale. It's the best little town there is. We don't have a care in the world here. I mean, honestly, what more do you need to know? Um, all right, I, I have to go now. Really? Don't be such a stranger. Look at this weather. Can you believe it? So what do you do around here, Jack? I work to feed my family just like every red-blooded American man should. Why, a man that can't keep his family fed isn't any kind of man at all. No, sir. Right. I have to go now. I'll tell Linda and Junior that you said hello. All right, let's see what's going on here. Oh, fucking hell. I knew it. 
I fucking knew it. You fucking, you dirty fuckers. Hey there, stranger. I've got something that I want to talk to you about. I couldn't What's help that? but notice that you're poking around in my basement. So, be honest now, you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Yes, and I saw what you're hiding down there, you sick bastard. I'm disappointed in you, stranger, so quick to judge us. Did you ever stop to think that I have a family to support here? Judge not, lest ye be judged, as the good book says, honestly, how many people have you killed? The only difference between us is that I'm bringing home the bacon for my family. I kill mostly in self-defense, first of all, and secondly, I don't eat people. Those are people, not bacon. What the fuck? Hey, I'll have none of that language in this house. <sighs> I can't believe I'm being caught a potty mouth by a cannibal. Okay, that's it. I warned you. Now I'm going to suck your jaw, mister. Yeah, I don't think so, fella. Not in a million fucking years. Fucking sick bastards. Get back here, Billy. Oh. Billy boy. Why don't you go fuck yourself? Like that? Linda, I thought we had a good thing going here. Ah. Not anymore. I saw what happened out there, stranger. Those people may have been my family, but it had to be done. I was like them for so many years. It's... I can't even talk about it. The only thing I can do is try to raise these kids and make Andale into a decent place. So you grew up here too. Sure did. Can't say that I'm proud of it though. It was all just normal. It's what we all did. I did never think much about it. I married Gladys, just like every boy in Andale married the girl closest to his age. We had Linda, and she grew up to marry Jack. It wasn't until right. Gladys died that I thought about what went on around here. So many people over the years, hundreds, thousands maybe. But what could I do? I'm just an old man. But you ended it. Bless you. So what's going to happen to the kids? They'll stay here with me and I'll raise them myself. It's a shame that they have to grow up without their parents. But mm. to tell you the truth... It's a lot better than growing up with their parents, everything considered. Better right. an orphan than a cannibal, I guess. <clears throat> now what will you do? We'll do our best is what we'll do. Me and the kids here in Andale. What's left of it, anyway. It'll be hard going, but we'll do the best we can. I just hope that one day these kids will grow up to do some good for this place, after all the evil that's been done here. Right. Well, see you later. Bye.